In this enshrouded video, I'm going to be discussing building and crafting in the game. I'm going to be giving you guys some tips on why to build, what to build, how to build, and give you guys some basic and advanced tips and kind of discuss the crafting system in enshrouded. This is going to be a bit of a different video than I normally do because you're going to see me basically create an entire settlement from scratch, kind of like a time lapse while I'm talking about some of these things. And obviously we'll show you the specifics, but we'll also show you what it looks like when you first start and what kind of your end product should look like. Before I get into all the details though, big shout out to Keen Games who both developed and published Enshrouded for sponsoring this video. If you guys are looking to pick up Enshrouded or haven't picked it up yet, you can use the link below to support our channel. This game has an 85% on Steam right now, which is pretty damn good. So obviously once you start building in Enshrouded or once you've decided that you're gonna build your flame altar and the first thing you need to do is figure out where you wanna build it. And one of the really interesting things about Enshrouded in my opinion, that's a lot more forgiving in terms of build location for you and that's because you can fast travel back to your flame altar you have a lot of storage that you can fill up um, if you're just talking about in terms of materials so you don't have to position your you know your base or whatever like right around a lot of natural resources because you can go out harvest a bunch and then just fast travel back to your base so you don't have to like run a long distance and then run a long distance back now you obviously can shorten the distance if you place it near resources but it's a bit more forgiving in that respect. And a lot of, you know, survival type building games, positioning your, your house or your home base near like water or in specific locations can be really beneficial. And that's not so much of an issue in Enshrouded. And because of that, you have a lot more freedom to determine where to build. You can build on a cliff, you can build in a cave, you can build pretty much anywhere. But if you're looking to create like sort of a city settlement or a little town, which is kind of what I decided to do in this video, Looking for a very flat surface can benefit you immensely. You can obviously kind of level the ground out yourself if you want, but you can find areas in the game that are relatively flat, and that's what I did here. I just found a flat surface, and so I began there. So once you place your flame altar, you obviously need to build a workbench in order to even build blocks in order to create something. So that's the first course of business once that's done. I like to put a stone foundation down because I think it looks nice. It also matches kind of what's around the flame altar, in my opinion. Of where I want to build my house and you know the importance of having a house or structure that gives you protection in this game is that it increases your comfort and comfort does a couple things for you in Enshrouded the first is that it gives you a rested buff for a certain amount of time that gets longer the more comfortable you are that makes your stamina replenish faster and basically makes you more effective at you know traversing the crane combat and you know gathering resources etc but the other thing does is it increases your stamina bar or the amount of stamina that you have so that you can do more things before you run out of stamina. You can harvest longer, you can, you know, climb longer, you can jump farther, you can glide longer, etc. So there is reason to build in this game and predominantly that's what it is. And if you are someone who's like been struggling to solve some of the puzzles because you just keep running out of stamina, I would argue that the way around that is to become more comfortable and rest at areas that give you comfort. So you have more stamina to pull off those puzzles. So obviously the first thing you're going to do is throw up a house, whether that's out of wood or out of stone, etc. Put a roof on it and probably put a fireplace inside to give you some warmth, etc. And one thing I want to mention when building your structures is that you can toggle on, snap on, and snap off. And what this does is, you know, it makes it so that your, your cursor or whatever you're mousing over will automatically lock to like what you created last, essentially making it so it's a bit easier to like create a straight line if you're talking about walls or straight line if you're talking about like maybe making a fence or foundation or something like that. But there are some disadvantages to having it on. And I actually find that I do a lot of my building with it off and that's because it gives me a lot more freedom. You can only build in certain places when it's on like it doesn't give you as much freedom and flexibility. So I would say that if you really get into the building and enshrouded, you should learn to build with snap off most of the time. And additionally, I like to manually build with blocks a lot. And, you know, just by putting like a resource on my bar and using it to create, you know, structures from scratch and things like that and really explore around how to do that. There are a lot of, you know, if you create a construction hammer, there are a lot of prefab units that you can make or, you know, different custom structures like walls and windows and doors. And I will use those for things that can use substantial resources like foundations and stuff like that. But I find I like to build a lot of things or play around a lot with the building blocks in particular because you kind of get inspired when you're doing that. And I think you make a lot more creative structures if you learn to use that. Now, it obviously takes a lot longer, 
but I feel like you learn a lot from messing around with the blocks, and I would urge you, if you're not happy with the way things are coming out for you in your building and in Shrouded, to play around with that more. Probably one exception here, though, is roofs. Roofs are really hard to make from scratch, and they're just kind of a headache, particularly if you're new to the crafting system in Shrouded. Make prefab roofs if you can, and try not to mess around with them too much, and if you mess them up, just, you know, delete them and recreate them again, because they are really easy to mess up, and they're not quite as straightforward as some other things in the game. Now, if you start building your, you know, house or your little settlement or whatever, you're, the first thing you're going to realize is there isn't much you can build right away, and you're going to need to go get NPCs, which if you haven't figured out by now, unlock crafting recipes so that you can actually make specific objects, and you don't have to make a shelf out of blocks. Like, you can actually just create a shelf or something like that. And there are five NPCs, the blacksmith, hunter, farmer, alchemist, and carpenter, and all of them are going to give you things you can craft, as well as structures that will produce resources for you over time. So you definitely want to go out of your way to try and find these characters pretty early on in the game. And they're not located super far, because Enshrouded is definitely meant for you to find them fairly quickly, so that you have access to building most of this stuff pretty fast. And once you've rescued these NPCs, you'll need to put them, you know, around your house or in your house or something like that. I've kind of created a settlement here. But you'll place them around, and a lot of them will require some sort of cover or protection from the elements in order to craft some of the recipes. So you can see that I've created some structures over them um, in order to protect them. And you will need to do the same thing in order to be able to, you know, utilize them completely. Now, not only will you gain access to new, you know, furniture and structures that you can build when you rescue these NPCs and place them in your camp or your base, um, but you also have like new gear that they can craft for you. And it's really important because no matter what play style you're going for, whether you're like a warrior or an archer or a mage, there is an armor out there for you that will give you stats for that type of play style that will really, really benefit your character and make things easy for you. So you're not only going to get more comfort from building all of this stuff, but you also get better gear that you can reliably craft. And armor is something that's very hard to come by, in my opinion, and enshrouded compared to weapons. So it's a really good source of getting some easy stats, essentially. And as you, you know, unlock these NPCs and place them, you'll realize that you can craft better versions of some of the things you had. Maybe you don't want a crude table, but you want a nicer table, or maybe you had a basic fireplace, but you want a more, you know, fancy one, or your bed is a simple one, but you want a fancier bed, etc. chairs, benches. All these things will further increase your comfort level. So if you've made all these things previously, which you probably have if you've been building a lot, you'll then want to start to kind of replace these things in order to have even more comfort that will, you know, make you rested longer and also increase your stamina more. And also it just looks really cool, right? Like the the better looking stuff looks better and if you're all about building in this game, you obviously want your base or your your hub to look good. You want it to be as fancy as possible, like for instance, you'll notice in this video I started out with a thatch roof and then replaced it to something else later on when I could. So you know, you're going to make upgrades to your, your settlement over time, and you should definitely pay attention to that. It won't stay exactly as it is. And as you progress the game, you'll upgrade your flame altar, and as you upgrade your flame altar, you'll be able to expand the area that you can build. Like a little bit after starting the settlement that you're seeing in this footage, I expanded the flame altar, and I could have built even more in a larger area than this. And you'll see that there's a lot of area around the walls of my settlement that I could you know, expand into and, you know, probably will as I continue to play the game. And you can expand it even further than that. So you can build like a whole town if you want and build all these things and you can get really, really into it. There's a lot more space than what you just start out with. Now, there are some materials that you'll need to craft some of these things. And I just want to give you guys some quick tips on like, you know, easy ways to get some of these materials. Things that you'll need a lot of that are not like super readily available are like resin, for instance. Resin drops from trees when you cut them down randomly sometimes. So you'll need to cut down a lot of trees. And if you see the gold trees around the landscape, those always drop resin. So look, be on the lookout for the gold trees if you need resin, because a lot of things that you craft in this game need resin. So that's definitely a good way to do that. If, and you might as well just harvest a bunch of wood while you're farming resin, because you'll need a lot of wood anyway. So if you're looking for resin, go cut down trees, cut down the gold ones you see, and you will get what you need. Another resource that you will eventually need is flintstone, and flintstone can be found in flintstone mines, or you can find it around the landscape. It's usually not too difficult to find, and you'll want to stock up on this for different, you know, blocks that you may want to build. And 
you know, what I really love about mining Flintstone as well is it'll give you experience. So if you want to just gain some easy experience, you know, you can go and mine a whole bunch of Flintstone and gain some easy experience that way. That'll help level your character at the same time. But these are scattered around the map. You should find a mine sooner or later. Maybe remember where that is. It should mark it on your map. And then you can just go to it if you need a bunch of Flintstone. Spend, you know, 10 minutes, like, harvesting it, etc. Five minutes. And another resource that you'll need are bones and animal fur. Obviously, these are from animals is the easiest way to get these. Um, so anytime you, like, see wolves out there on the landscape, etc., you want to make sure that you kill them if you can in order to harvest their fur and their, uh, their bones in order to craft stuff. So... Don't throw those away. If you don't know what to do with them, you will need them eventually. So make sure you hang on to them and just, you know, take them out when you see them in order to get that. And probably one of the things that you'll need right away, it, you probably figured this out if you're just starting the game, is that you'll need plant fibers and you need string a lot. And basically, you should just be harvesting this wherever you're going out on the landscape. If you're traversing on the landscape to a quest or to an area, just pick up anything you see on the way when it comes to twigs and plant fibers. You don't really need twigs as much, but plant fibers you'll need a ton of to make string and for other things. So just farm those as you go back and forth, and then you won't have to stop to farm that. And the last thing is metal. You'll need a lot of metal, particularly as you get into more of the advanced crafting in the game. And the best way to farm metal is to go like to like a camp of like human enemies and basically kill them and pick up metal off their bodies. And some of these like camps are marked on your map, so you should you know know where they are, or maybe you can remember where you fought a lot of human enemies. And you can just go there. And you can even place like a, you know, secondary flame altar near some of these resources, like maybe near a camp so that you can just teleport to it, farm the metal you need when you need it, and then teleport back to your other base. It's one of the really nice things. And it's a really good way to use secondary flame altars in this game is to put them near like certain resources that you, you know, find an abundance of. So you can just port there and pick some up and then port back. It's a great way to use them. And obviously, if you want to build in your secondary locations, you can do that as well. But at the beginning, when you're just working on that one perfect settlement, maybe use them to get your resources and then place them where you want after that. And perhaps the last tip is simply don't be afraid to experiment when building an enshroud. It has a very, very forgiving system. And anything that you build with a construction hammer, you know, like walls, ceilings, floors, etc., anything you build out of blocks essentially can be refunded if you destroy it. So there's not a lot of risk there. It's just your time investment that's being risked. And this is not some sort of advanced tip. It's not like something that's hidden that you didn't figure out right away. But what this allows you to do is not wait until you've perfected everything or acquired a lot of materials or, you know, you don't have to sit there and meticulously tinker with everything to start building. You can start building and even if it comes out a little bit rough or a little bit crude, you can tinker with it and perfect it and polish it over time and really get it the way you want it without having like this fear or that you're going to waste materials by trying new things. So it really allows you to go out and build things that you wouldn't normally and get allows you to get really creative, which I really, really enjoy. So that kind of wraps up my tips. And as promised, there is a time lapse of me building this little settlement. And I'm going to show you that now. It's not going to be narrated. But if you want to watch like how this kind of gets put together over time and just kind of see something a little bit entertaining, you can keep watching the video to see that. And also, you know, big shout out again to Keen Games for sponsoring this video. If you guys are, haven't played in Shrouded yet or you want to pick it up, make sure you use our link below to support the channel.
we